Coming up next, you know, for just short of a decade, today's classic rock song was the most played song on rock radio ever, even bigger than Stairway. And it almost never got released. They almost left it off the album. I mean, the band was so shocked when it became a hit because it was so quirky, so out of the ordinary. This song was a revelation though. It felt like four different songs combined. It changed tempo all over the place. And the funny thing is the band pretty much nailed it in one take. Now I know you've heard that before, but to do it in one take on this song, it's hard to believe. It's the song that every rock song is measured by and it never gets old. Today, we have two members of the band to tell the story. One who was the guitarist who was there helping formulate it and their current lead singer who bought the song in high school. He loved it. He probably had no clue that he'd be singing it with his favorite band decades later. You gotta hear this story from them to believe it. Coming up. Hey, music junkies, professor of rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. You know, if you've ever rolled your eyes when people leave a concert during an encore, uh, you're going to be right at home with this channel. Make sure that you subscribe so that you never miss out on our daily content, the stories of the songs straight from the legends. Also, if you'd like to be an honorary producer of our content and, and see more videos, help us by clicking on our Patreon links below. So it's time for another edition of our series number one in our hearts where we break down a song that absolutely should have been a number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100. Kansas is one of the biggest classic rock bands ever. They've had nine gold albums, three multi-platinum records. They spent over 200 weeks on the Billboard charts just in the 70s and 80s. Two of their songs, Dust in the Wind and Carry On Wayward Son, are part of the most played songs ever on radio. All we are is dust in the wind. All we are In fact, Carry On Wayward Son has finished several years as the most played song on rock radio, actually six or seven years. Uh, the origins of Kansas are extensive with the, the band originally being a formation of two bands coming together. There was Saratoga and White Clover. There was Kansas One and Kansas Two, and a reforming of White Clover. But after receiving a record contract with Don Kirshner, the group returned to the Kansas name, including the phenomenal Steve Walsh on vocals, piano, and organ. There's Carrie Livgren on guitars and piano, Robbie Starnhardt on violin and vocals, Dave Hope on bass, Phil Ehart on drums, and of course, Rich Williams on guitars. They recorded their self-titled debut and began to build a cult following. <laughs> Song for America was released in 75 and it peaked at number 57 on the Billboard chart, eventually going gold. Mass came next with little fanfare, but no one could ever prepare the band for their fourth studio album. I mean, Left Overture was released in 76. It would sell 5 million copies on the strength of their masterwork, Carry On Wayward Son. No Carrie Livgren. He wrote it and, and the band played it with fervor. Uh, Carry On Wayward Son peaked at number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100. It's her first top 20 hit in the US and it was a gold record. It's still pretty mind boggling though that the song didn't go to number one because it has far outlasted many of the songs in that decade that did go to the top spot. But decades later, it's all worked out. Carry On Wayward Son is still played all of the time. So coming up next, we have the story of the song from Kansas guitarist Rich Williams. Uh, I actually sat down with Rich Williams and current lead singer Ronnie Platt. We also have an old singer from Kansas in there as well. Uh, really cool interview. You're going to want to see this. Here's Rich with the story. Don't you cry no more. Well, 76, Left Overture, one of the greatest albums of all time. Tell me about your approach when you started to go into this, because this is what, what took you guys worldwide, really. Well, we were on a pretty fast pace of suddenly we're traveling a lot, but then, mm -hmm. you know, the, on this album a year kind of cycle or, or even faster with the record company. And Don Kirster was kind of our benefactor. He's giving us tour support. All of a sudden the tour is ending and it's time to do another album. And the Kansas base was building and, but nothing had really happened yet. We were still, you know, an, an opening act. And I'm sure at some point in time, this, I mean, this could have been our last album. 
if it hadn't taken off. How, it's how kind much, of the make or break. How much longer it was Kirshner going to you know, keep bleeding before I said, okay, guys, you know, you can, we're going to ship you off to another label or something. I didn't really f feel the, any pressure personally, you know, but I was kind of a late developer. Yeah, you know, I took young and dumb into my 50s, I think. <laughs> you know, I just, I wasn't all that concerned about. Well, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I, I didn't feel that much pressure about any of it. I was just glad to be here and it's fun to be in a band and I was yeah. enjoying that. I wasn't really that thoughtful about, you know, any future. I knew I, if this didn't work, I'd just be in another band somewhere. So I was just, I was enjoying myself. So we, st we start working. And all of a sudden, Kerry just sort of every day coming in with something else. So he was just writing stuff, you know, on an upright piano, putting things in his head, writing lyrics and bringing them in. And so there was a general feeling of optimism. Things, we got some good stuff going on here. So it was, all the rehearsals were quite good. We we'd pretty much was, had the album done. We had some stuff in the can. This is the last day of rehearsal, kind of refresh, go through what, this stuff. Then we're going to head to Bogalusa, Louisiana to record. Yeah. Okay, I got one more song. It's, <clears throat> and I can still hear the groans. Like, oh, you know, this, <laughs> we don't want to, we've learned enough. We've got more albums, more songs that we're going to record. And he's start playing Wayward Son. So, well, wow, this, this could be a cool song. Uh, but... We didn't really learn it at all. It wasn't until we got into the studio. And in, in the studio, we don't just you know, set up and do a song. It's a production line of stuff. You're getting basic tracks, you're getting drum sounds, and get, then you lay down all these tracks, and you start adding keyboards and other things. So you're going from song to song. So as we're getting basic tracks done, it's kind of, well, don't, we need to probably get that other song, you know, that new song. And so we, that was learned basically with the tape rolling. So the version wow. on there is probably the first time we did it right. Wow. Uh, it's interesting. I don't know if this has anything to do with it, its popularity or what, but its tempo varies quite a bit. When the first verse kicks in, it it's, it's kind of rushes mm -hmm. in and stuff. You know, we weren't comfortable with it. But again, rock and roll isn't, when it's perfect, it becomes very sterile. And what you're hearing is some urgency in the playing. A little scared, okay, well, here's, where's the part? Oh, here yeah. it comes, okay, that's right. Okay, okay, you're there. <laughs> and the, you, when you can capture that kind of urgency without a mistake, um, sometimes it can be a magical thing. And so, while that isn't a perfect recording, it's a perfect recording. Oh, it is. What's interesting is it's one of uh, only a few songs that, because of the acapella beginning, you never had to worry as a kid when you were trying to listen to classic rock stations, for me, that the DJ would talk over it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and what's cool about that song is it was it went to number 11, and one of the most played songs, I think, for like six or seven years in a row across America, it's the most played song on classic rock stations combined. Yeah out of every classic rock band, including the Beatles. That's the number one song. It's been that way for, for many years, but it's a song that uh, really sh was a number one hit because it, it was, I know, number one in a lot of places, but it's one of those songs that there have been lots of number one hits that don't have the staying power. That is a song that everybody knows that song. That was the song that saved our career. That, that song catapulted us. Suddenly, you know, we're selling tens of thousands of albums a week and took us from being an opening act into you know, being headlining. headlining. So that was, that, that was a game changer for us. Well, this is a song that's so used in pop culture as well. Supernatural, Happy Gilmore, Anchorman. Have you seen some of those? Oh, seen them all. Come get a taste. South Park is my favorite use of it because <laughs> it's the Guitar Hero episode. Uh -huh. <laughs> and Man, you guys are good. Also covered by so many people, including the Oak Ridge Boys. You know, have yeah. you ever heard that? That, that, that was an odd one. Yeah, yeah. it really yeah. was. Don't you cry no more. And the latest, there's a new Anthrax album. Don't you cry. Don't you cry. 
it's influenced so many people. And, and Anthrax is such a mellow band. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I, I try not to analyze music because it's always just been about music. It either moves me or it doesn't. I don't yeah. break things down into categories and genres. I just listen to stuff and I either like it or I don't. I find something I like and, I, and then I want more of it. And so, yeah, that's how I, I felt the same about rock as I did metal or punk or yeah. hardcore or rap or any of those, any genre, I felt the same way. Pop, uh, it moved me in the same way. I, I liked it, I loved it. it. It was important to me, I needed it in my life. Because a long time ago, I started basing my decisions on, am I gonna have fun? That's how I, anything in my life, writing a book or whatever I've done in my life, it really comes down to, is this gonna be something that is gonna be fun for me to do? Because if it means leaving home or if it means a lot more work. I don't, I'm not looking for that. I just want to have fun. Tell me your thoughts on Carry On Wayward Son. Carrie probably told you how that came together, but after seeing it so many times, you just kill it on that song. You know what? Uh, I did hear the whole story on, on that. I mean, I, I heard that it was written about, was it his, his brother? That's really all I know about it. Other than it's one of the most iconic rock songs ever written. I mean, you can play dare, 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 and that's it. You know, just like when, uh, a friend of mine that came up with the hook on um, Soul Man, guitar player. Uh, anyway, when he does that song live, he just goes, and everybody goes, Soul Man. You know, that's kind of the way we would sound. Or like uh, Sweet Home Alabama. Or, right. You, know. dun, 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 dun. you don't even have to play that much. I know. Wayward yeah. Sound's got that same, you know, what a song, man. And yeah. you know what? Uh, and I know this because I have, you know, I have young kids. When Rock Band came out, it reintroduced a whole different, whole different generation to that song. You know, suddenly every, you know, young kids were very familiar with that song and love it. To them, it's new. You know, and, singing uh, it is probably just one of those grateful things for you. Like, man, this is so cool. Oh gosh, I'm honored to sing it. What's so great also about Kansas are the harmonies. The way you guys put that together, the way that the instruments, the harmonies, all of it, it sounds so together, but also distinct and separate. Don't you cry. Don't you cry no Tell me about putting those harmonies together, the song, how it came. Let's start this with acapella. I think well, it was just set up perfect. This chorus would be perfect as an opening, but let's do it acapella. But me and Dave, in our previous band stuff, um, played a... Like a, when Ben was in, we played a whole Three Dug Night set, you know, and it's for you, a Three Dug Night, that uh, uh, do, 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 yeah. acapella thing was one of my favorite things. It was so unique to start with this acapella. And so to use it on Wayward Son was just a, a no brainer, you know, finally to have an opportunity to have something like that was awesome. There's a lot of songs in that song. You know, it's got that chorus, you know, yeah. then it's got the opening riff that goes, for, you know, into a shuffle in a different feel. Then a halftime verse, you know, where it completely breaks down. Then a middle section that's a whole different riff altogether. Uh, there's a lot of parts to that. And there was, at the time, some accusations that we sold out again. You can't say, well, they sold out with that song. Well, selling out would mean you're jumping on the bandwagon of a trend. Right. And right. so well, we're jumping on the Peter, Paul, and Mary trend? Or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. it, so, I mean, it was just a very well-written song. Yeah. Just, just because, you know, the song I mean, a, a blind pig can find an acorn once in a while. <laughs> and we weren't aiming at some target that was on the charts. Like, we need to be like this so we can have a hit. It became a hit. You know, on its own merit, yeah. not because we were selling out or, or anything. There wasn't anything like Wayward Son on the radio. Uh, it, again, it was the right time, the right place. Uh, and there's so many songs that have been inspired by that. Just the guitar line, the da na 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 da na 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 I mean, you could tie probably 20 different songs that came after. At least. At least. Well, Ronnie, for you, I mean, what's it like seeing that night after night? 
to come into the band and have this song that's already just this golden song, one of the greatest songs of all time, greatest rock epics ever, and to it, be able to it, sing that. It's What's something to play Carry On in so many cover bands throughout my life. <laughs> and then, you know, when you sing these songs as the lead singer of Kansas, the intensity grows a little bit. I, I have a question though for Rich, you know, since we're on the thing of questions here. Yeah. Like so many people, I, Left Overture was the first album that I that yeah. I bought. And then I went back, fallen in love with the music. You know, I went back and I bought the previous albums. But Left Overture to me seemed so much more well polished. Mm -hmm. Well, it every was... song was just so in depth. When you were recording Left Overture, did you recognize that things seemed more polished than the previous? Well, albums? there was a, there was a, just a general feeling that. This really feels good. This feels yeah. right. There's something going on here. Magic. And we bit. were, you know, locked away in studio in the country in Bogalusa. We lived at that studio, and it wasn't like being in Los Angeles. You just walk out on the street, and you're <laughs> in the middle of it. Or first album done in, you'd in open New York. the door and armadillo or there was, something. Yeah, like. it was. There was <laughs> run in. We we're in the middle of nowhere, but there was just a feeling, a very positive feeling that this is some really good stuff. I'll play that one again, and uh, you know, I remember, you know, looking at the wall. Okay, at the start of the wall, we'll you know, play a little solo here. And so I just wanted to just try something different and something just something melodic. And I went for a tone that I'd never gone for before, mm -hmm. a whole different thing. And I, you, don't, you don't really know what you've done sometimes. I'll have to try this. And you go out. I was sitting on the lobby and it was playing. I was just going. And uh, one of the band members' wives was there and she goes, That's one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard. And I'm sitting there going, this is the first time I'd kind of really heard it. Sometimes yeah. you record something, then you got to get away from it. Fresh but, ears. But, yeah. but there was just that was going on all the time with this whole project. And so by the you know now we're listening to Wayward Son, you know, through the blasting through the studio monitors and just going, whoa, the, and this this album really feels good. For, you know, there's always been albums where. You like bits and pieces of it, but there was a lot. Of, there's compromises and things you wish you could have got back to, and things you would, wish you would have changed. That was on all the previous albums. And the first album was just like, "That's good enough." Next, <laughs> um, you know, we had two weeks to do it, do everything. But this two time weeks. was a was a really two weeks. This was a really good feeling wow. about this. We just yeah. had no idea that it was going to have the impact on music and on our lives that it did but we really there was a, just a feeling that we did something you knew it was a good song we knew it was a good album definitely did it, it was felt different than everything else because wayward son also i like the lyrics how it's kind of a searching always tried to figure out as a kid as you listen to the lyrics and try to delve into the song like who was the wayward son was it was it carrie was it all that kind of stuff that's what's cool about what you created with with that stuff personally for me and this, I'm speaking for myself, a, a lyric that is thought-provoking, but, but yet a bit ambiguous. Where is it? What is this about? Who is this about? It, does the person listening to it, do ident they identify themselves in that? Or, you know, also, you know, and something that kind of fits each person in a slightly different way. Mm -hmm. Wayward Son is definitely one of those songs. I like a song that is thought-provoking mm -hmm. rather than a song that is telling you, you know, here's the way it is, you know, stand back, I'm going to get on my pedestal, I'm going to tell you the answer. I think people like to be intrigued and to find their own answer. If they can see themselves almost like in a mirror in that song, that's going to mean, because that uh, song means something different to everybody. Exactly. And I think that's when lyrically you can, you've really done a good job is when you've spoken to people of all races, religions, cultures, and giving them something to, to all think about that they all can identify with yeah. separately and make their own conclusion. Uh, that, I think that's when you've really rung the bell. From all of us here at Professor of Rock, we want to dedicate this video to the memory of the great Robbie Steinhardt. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Leave us a comment about this classic 70s masterwork. And what are your memories of, of Carry On Wayward Son? And what do you think about Kansas? 
tell us below. If you'd like to be a permanent part of our channel, make sure that you subscribe below so you never miss out. Until next time, three chords. Yeah,